Welcome back. This is 2.3 Coast. We're going to talk about part one, which is coastal processes, landscapes, and then looking at ecosystem mangroves and coral reefs. In part two, we're going to look at the essential case studies then for this unit. It is quite a big one, so part one is going to take a while. Make sure you stop after each section, which is the processes, then the landscapes, then the uh, ecosystems. Make sure you understand everything before moving on. Otherwise, it's quite a lot of information all at once. Okay, here we are. We have the coastal area, which includes the coastline. Then we move on to the beach. The beach is made up of a backshore and foreshore. They're going to be the main terms that we're going to refer to. You can also see, though, here that we have a high tide and a low tide, and that creates an area of surf zone. That's where the waves are breaking, coming into the coastal area. And collectively, then we call this the littoral zone. First of all, we're looking at the processes and the landscape. So we'll look at more erosional landscape like these cliffs over here. And we'll look at depositional landscapes like this beach over here. Yeah. Now, the first concept is fetch is the first process. So we're going to imagine these are three islands, one, two, and three. So the distance between one and two is quite a lot larger than the distance between three and two. So because of this, this means that the distance between one or two would have a greater fetch. And this means that a greater amount of wind can pass over the uh, water here and it allows it to build up uh, energy and to transfer it into wave energy. As the waves are moving, a couple of key vocabulary for this, we have the wave length, which is the distance between each crest and the wave height, the height between the trough at the bottom and the crest at the top. Wave frequency then is just uh, talking about the amount of waves that pass one point at one time. <clears throat> waves then uh, transfer energy from the air to the water. As it's doing so, then it starts to move in oscillations or a circular pattern. And as we get deeper, those oscillations are then going to decrease in size. When it approaches the shore, it's known as shoaling. And this is when it gets, uh, it runs out of space essentially and goes from a very uh, oscillation round shape to an elliptical shape. And basically the energy at the bottom is stopped and the energy at the top continues to go over. So this is when the wave breaks onto the shore. When it breaks on the shore, it's called swash, moving up the beach. When it comes back down, it moves as backwash down the beach. Swash will be more dictated by the direction of the waves uh, from the wind, and backwash then just kind of follows gravity in a straight line back. So we're going to talk about two different types of waves. The one on the left we can see is going to be quite a, maybe a powerful uh, breaker wave eventually, and the one on the right then we can see is uh, a lot more gentle there with a few birds hanging out there. Uh, so the smaller, gentler one is known as a constructive wave. We would see that it has short wave height and long wave length. So this would mean that it would have a gently sloped profile and gradual spilling waves, just like this one here on the right. The stronger swash means that it's going to bring sediment onto the shore, so it's able to carry sediment on. But because of the low energy, it's not going to be able to carry much sediment off with its backwash. So it's continuously breaking. And this means that it's going to gradually then begin to drop sediment as it's coming along like here, here, and here. So it does so quite, um, just quite gradually. And that's what causes deposition in this area. So destructive wave is working a little differently. It has a large wave height and a short wave length. The beach will, generally speaking, have quite a gentle gradient there because it's going to be building up with loads of big sediment because it has a lot of energy. So it's going to bring big sediment up there, deposit it here and create high gradient slope. And because of that, then as the wave is coming up, we're going to see that that wave is then going to break more suddenly, which means it can hold all its energy until the last moment. And then it can break on the beach with its swash with a lot of energy, bringing lots of big sediment but it also retains some energy, so it has a strong backwash, an undercurrent that can bring sediment back out to the beach and can even deposit it out here as like an offshore beach there. Okay, let's go through some of the more common processes. You'll probably recognize that a few of these overlap with the river section as well, so very similar definition. So first we have the erosion, which is hydraulic action, so that's when the wave is moving towards the cliff and it's going to compress air into the cracks and then remove that. While it's opening up the crack, we call this cavitation. 
And uh, yeah, that's happening along the coastline with the waves. Now, if the wave is carrying sediment and it hits that sediment off the cliff as well and uses the sediment to increase the rates of erosion, this is known as abrasion. Just think about when or if you've been swimming in the sea and you feel the wave hitting you, it has a lot of force for sure. But if you get uh, something that's also been, uh, let's say somebody's surfboard is flying along in the wave and that hits you with the wave, it's going to be a lot sore. Okay, so this is the same idea is the waves are using the sediment to break down the cliff. And then that breaks away more rock, which can be used as well. Attrition then is quite important here in the coastline because it's the breaking down of bigger sediment, making it smaller, rounder, and gradually will break it down into sand. And this will dictate then what the sediment is on the beach. So solution, we're looking at things like weathering, maybe it's calcium carbonate being dissolved and it's carried away. So the, the action of dissolving it and the action of removing it is also known as solution. Transportation, then we have traction, sediments too heavy, so it gets dragged along the ground or rolled along the ground. And saltation, the waves can pick up the sediment, but then it might lose some velocity, but the sediment still has some momentum, so it's able to continue bouncing with that momentum. Finally, suspension, usually very fine, small grain sediment, and it's being suspended instead of going along the bottom. Solution then, as I mentioned, is also a type of transportation. Deposition then, uh, when water falls below the settling velocity um, or the depositional velocity, this means that the waves no longer have the energy to carry the sediment and will deposit it in an area like a beach. So if we think about it, a gently gradient and a constructive wave, the wave's going to be coming in and it's going to be depositing sediment all the way out here uh, as it's going forward as well. So that's the reason why we would see this has a very gentle gradient then all the way out to the sea and we don't see any very steep. Now it's really important that you know that vocabulary. So make sure you know that before moving on to the next section. It's gonna help you out here to understand what's happening. Hey, as always, if that was useful, like, subscribe, and I'll be able to post more videos then. But also if you want the rest of the content, follow the links below and you should find what you're looking for. All right, good luck guys.